Today, I'll be doing something a little bit different. Specifically, I'll take this photograph from the Dreams Time Image Library, about which you can learn more in the description. I'll add it to this otherworldly AI backdrop that I created in Adobe Firefly, and then I'll composite them together using a mask, a filter, and a little known adjustment to create this sweet final effect inside Photoshop. Interested? Now that you mention it, so am I. Let's get started. And so as I mentioned, the background image comes to us from Firefly. And so here I am in Firefly looking at the text to image module. For what it's worth, my prompt down here is sunlit fantasy land rolling hills. I made fantasy land two words, you know, just wasn't sure if it recognized it as a single word. And then I set the aspect ratio to widescreen, which currently gives us the most high resolution results. Two megapixels is all as things stand right now, but still that's something. I set content type to photo and then notice I have one more style tag right here beautiful and that is located if you select all in the styles area and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom here in concepts one of our concepts is beautiful it's a conceptually beautiful image don't you know and then I got four results and I like this one the best so I downloaded it and that's where we're going to start and so here is that image open inside Photoshop. I want you to notice that we're looking at it at the 100% zoom ratio. You can see that up here in the title tab. Whereas where the Ziggy and baby photograph is concerned, because I guess the mother's name is Ziggy, the baby's name was Baby. It's so new at, at this point in time. But notice we're seeing it at the 40% zoom ratio. So, so in other words, we have way more pixels. And somehow we need to reconcile that. So one way would be to switch over to the Firefly image with the rectangular marquee tool active up here at the top of the toolbox. You'd right click inside the image window, easiest way to work, and choose duplicate layer. Brings up a dialog box, set document to Ziggy and Baby right there. And then you can go ahead and name the layers, should be able to. I'll call mine Firefly, the new layer that is. And notice it's got a, a serial number of sorts, 12,840. And so I'll just go ahead and enter that. And that way, you know, if I have to go back and search for the image, again later than I can find it and then I'll click OK and now I'll switch over to the composition in progress and we seem to have a little bit of a problem the image is the background image the firefly image is quite dinky indeed all right so what we're going to do is we're going to transform it. We're going to scale it using the free transform command so we'll go up to the edit menu and choose this guy right here free transform keyboard shortcut control T command T on the Mac and now I'll just make sure that the width and height values are linked together as they are by default. They should be anyway. And then I'll just go ahead and make this guy wider like so until it more than covers the area consumed by the draft. So notice that I'm making it much larger than the canvas. I want you to see the width value in the heads up display right there. It's about... 6,200 pixels, uh, roughly. That's, that's where we're going with this. Notice interpolation is set to, well, let's say it's set to bicubic automatic. Let's just go ahead and do that because that's the way it's set by default. But notice that we don't have a, a heck of a lot of interpolation controls. There's nothing here that says preserve details but specifically. And so what bicubic automatic is going to do is it's going to slightly smooth the image as it upsamples it. And, and we are increasing the image by a lot, by the way. They'll come to that in just a moment. So I'll go ahead and choose that interpolation method right there. And then I'll just press the enter key or the return key on the Mac a couple of times in order to accept that change. And now I want to move this guy down into position. I'm going to do that using the move tool. Might as well switch to it. You can press it, the V key on the, uh, in order to get it. And then I'll go ahead and drag this guy until it snaps down into alignment like so. So notice it snapped to the top, but the, the the top left corner of the image, in other words, is snapped into alignment with the top left corner of the canvas. That's not going to look all that great, though. I'm going to zoom in right here so that we can see some details. So here I am looking at the image at the 200% zoom size. Gosh, things get compressed on YouTube and other platforms as well. So let's zoom in even further, just so you can really see. 
And notice that we have some chunky stuff here in this cloud or whatever it is. And we have some very soft transitions, as you would expect, you know, because of the upsampling. But the chunkiness is what I don't like. The fact that the noise has gotten exaggerated. Yes, there is noise associated with Firefly images pretty reliably, by the way. So anyway, I'll just go ahead and zoom out. And what I'm going to do is move this guy below. No, can't. Can't move anything below the background here inside the layers panel. So what I'm going to have to do is convert the background to a floating layer that I am going to call giraffes, which has one R and two Fs. Did you know that? I sometimes forget. Anyway, click OK. And now I can move the giraffes on top of the fireflies right there. All right, now I have gone ahead and created a mask in advance. I know that's a huge cheat, by the way. And I'm going to get to it by switching to the channels panel. Notice that right there. And there it is, final mask. And the easiest way to load it up and convert it to a layer mask is to Notice my cursor right there. I'm going to press the control key or the command key on the Mac. It's going to give me a little dotted marquee in my cursor, which tells me if I click now with the control or command key down, I'm going to convert the mask to a selection outline. And now I'll switch back to the layers panel and then I'll drop down to the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the panel and click on it. And we have a layer mask. Is it any good? Oh my gosh, this, this mask better be good. I've spent enough time on it. Now you may say, Deke, that was a massive cheat. You just cheated. You are such a big cheater. I hate you so bad. Here's the thing though. If you want to know exactly exactly how I created this mask step for step, then check out my Patreon, which you can get to by going to patreon.com slash deep. Now it's a great value. You'll want to join. All right. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to 40%. So we can see that we've got these delightful giraffes against their wonderful background. Problem is background's not so wonderful. I just showed you that it's got that chunky noise in it. Nobody wants chunky noise. So I'm going to switch back to the rolling hills image is what it's called. I called it, but it's still got that 20, uh, 12,840 serial number right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upsample it the professional way. And that is by going up to the image menu and choosing the image size command. And that's going to bring up this dialog box right here. Do you know that you can scale it. Just in case you don't know, here I go a scaling so you can see it happen. Now notice that the resample image, the resample checkbox is turned on. That's very important because we want to upsample. I'm also, I've got the width and height values linked together. That's a default setting. But anyway, I'm going to set the unit to pixels. And then I'm going to dial in, what was that? About 6,200 pixels for the width. That's going to pop the height value up to 3543 for what it's worth. Now, the resolution value, you know this, right? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. That's a print setting. Don't worry about it for now, for our purposes here. Here's what you need to worry about or think about anyway. Contemplate. I'm going to switch the height to percent, not the width, because that would mess up that, that I would interpret 6,200 as percent. I, I just want to see what the percent is. That's 345.98%. So approximately 346%. That means, well, what it means is that many, so 3.46 pixels wide by 3.46 pixels tall for every pixel that currently exists in the image. If you do that math, 3.46 times 3.46, so 3.46 squared, you get 12 by the way, so 12, 11 new pixels for every pixel inside the image. That's a heck of a lot of upsampling, sorry. That's why we need a good interpolation method. Now, at the very least, you want preserved details, but it's been improved over time. Preserve details 2.0. 2.0 is going to be better than 1.0. Gives you better curves and stuff like that. And, by the way... Here's the stuff. Remember how I was saying we have chunky noise? Well, that's if you leave this reduced noise value set to 0%. For Firefly images in general, will this stay this way forever? Does it apply to every single Firefly image? I don't know, but the ones I've worked with, 20% works really well. So reduce noise 20% 20 uh, 20 that is. Then click OK. And a moment later, really doesn't actually take that long, we have this enormous image. It's much, much better bigger and it's got all kinds of new wonderful detail you're going to see in just a moment when i right click inside the image and choose duplicate layer once again and i'm going to set the document of course to ziggy and baby and I, this time it doesn't let me name the background my goodness this command is so bizarre i can't predict 
when it's going to let me rename and when it won't. Anyway, it didn't, obviously. So the new one's called Background and the old one is called Firefly 2840. Let's turn off the giraffe for a moment so we can zoom in on this area right here. Let's check it out. Okay, this, can you, can you tell? Let's zoom in a little bit uh, farther. Uh, this is before with this soft detail, very soft sort of, you know, gummy detail. And then with its gummy noise as well, the chunky noise that I was talking about. And here it is now. Smoother transitions. I know it's subtle, but it is better. And less chunky noise. We do still have some noise. So I guess you could crank that reduced noise value up further if you wanted to. But it is bigger. Uh, better, that is, to say. So before, this is free transform. This is image. It is better. You can see that we have a, a more crisply defined details. If crisp is the, the, the crisp is a banana peel, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to select this guy right here. Well, this layer and get rid of it. Actually, I'll grab its name, copy it just so I have it. Then get rid of the layer, rename this guy what I want it to be. All right, let's zoom out so that we can take in the entire composition. And I'll turn the dress back on. Well, we have a little bit of problem, which is the Firefly uh, thingy down here, watermark. And besides, I don't really like the composition the way it is anyway. So what I'm going to do is press Control T, Command T on a Mac in order to enter the free transform mode once again. Right click inside the image and choose flip horizontal. And that's going to give us a better looking composition all the way around. Then I'll press the enter key to accept that change. And now I'll zoom in slightly. I'm just changing the zoom value in the bottom left corner of the window. And we have a couple of beautifully masked giraffes against this fantasy background. Problem is the giraffes don't match. They don't look like they belong here, do they? And so what I want to do is first give them a kind of painterly look. And so four months ago now, can you believe it? I talked about the oil paint filter in Photoshop and I'm going to apply it right now. So I'm going to click on the giraffes layer right there to select it. And then I'll go up to the filter menu, choose stylize, oops, and choose oil paint. What's the problem here? What is the problem, friends? Well, if I apply this filter now, I'm going to modify, permanently modify the pixels inside the giraffes. And that way I won't be able to change my mind later. I don't want that. I want to apply oil paint as a smart filter. So first I need to convert the giraffes to a smart object. The problem is with this whole setup is I've already gone ahead and assigned a layer mask to the giraffes. I want, the, I want to assign, I want to convert this guy or put this guy into a protective smart object. But if I do that, the the giraffe's layer i'll put its layer mask in there with it now wait a sec aren't you a little curious how i created that mask i would be too which is why i show you how to do it in glorious step-by-step -step detail at my patreon which is patreon.com slash deek now and now back to photography plus firefly in photoshop all right, I can move this guy to a different layer just for safekeeping. Then with that giraffe's layer active, right click once again with the rectangular marquee tool, choose convert to smart object. Now it is a smart object and now move the mask back onto the smart object. And that way I can now go up here to the filter menu, choose stylize and choose oil paint. And now I can apply any old settings I want. I'll just apply a bunch of fives because I don't care how things look because I'm such a slob. And I'll check out the eye and it looks great and then click OK. And now I think, no, I'm not that sloppy. I want to, I want to make some modifications. Well, I can. Now, I don't need this filter mask. It's just going to gum up the work. So I'm going to right click on it and choose delete filter mask because I'm fastidious, I tell you. Anyway, now I'm going to double click on oil paint to bring back the oil paint filter. I'm going to click on the baby eye so that we have it there. And then I'm going to meticulously max out every single one of these values because I just really want this oil paint to show up as well as possible. So scale definitely 10.0. I want that as high as possible. Cleanliness, nice clean brush strokes, stylization. I want a lot of stylization because otherwise if you don't stylize, you get this palette knife effect and I don't want that. I want smooth brush strokes and then bristle detail, totally up to you. Very subtle setting and I turned off lighting. You know, who cares really? You can go your own way. I just want to make sure it has a painterly looking effect. Click OK. All right, so that's kind of you know, all right, yeah, that works because I have such a great mask for one thing, but it also helps it kind of blend stylistically into the background. It doesn't, however, blend 
color wise does it not at all and so what we need to do is remap the colors and i'm going to do that by going up to the image menu choosing adjustments right here and then choosing gradient map which allows you where is it right there which allows you to remap the colors to very specific colors that is you're remapping the luminance levels inside the giraffes to very specific colors and i want those colors to match the colors of the background now you may say wait deke uh, correct me if i'm wrong but all those commands under the adjustment submenu right there, they're static adjustments, aren't they? And you don't, you just lectured us, you know, half to tears over not going static with the oil paint filter. Now you're going to go static with an adjustment. Well, yes, on one hand, you would be better off dropping down to the little black white icon at the bottom of the layers panel and choosing, where is it? Where is it? Right there, gradient map. From the bottom of the list and expect it to be so low anyway and that's going to be a non-destructive adjustment layer oh, ha, ha, ha. but here's the loophole oops i accidentally hit the key that i didn't mean to i'll uh, go ahead and get rid of that layer actually here here's the loophole friends go away properties panel i'm not talking to you here's the loophole we're working with the smart object so because we're working with a smart object, you can go to the image menu, choose adjustments, and then choose gradient map, and it becomes a smart adjustment. It'll actually be listed along with, notice that, it gets listed along with the oil paint filter in that fancy. Anyway, I want to move this out of the way, just so you can see that this gradient right here is mapping to the luminance levels inside the, the giraffes. So starting with the color on the left, which happens to be black by default, and going to the color on the right, right which is white by default, from black to white. And so if I change it to a different color, let's see what I got. Now, let's see, blues or something like that. Well, this is kind of a tragic example but let's just see i'll go with this like a blue to blue a dark blue to a light blue blue now the darkest luminous levels become dark blue and the lightest ones become light blue all right so there's that i actually want to start with this guy right here black to white or whatever it is this is going to work all right then let's say you want to make some custom modifications yes of course we do click in order to bring up the gradient editor dialog box gonna move that over to the right i know these are very far apart from each other now but that way we can see the giraffes and so what i want to do is let's say i'll click in the center someplace that that's duplicating the black which of course is not what i want but let's say i want to lift an orange what i should be able to do is double click on this color stop right here and then i'll just click out here in the oranges down here i'll click in an orange and that will lift a shade of cyan notice that what in the world gives that's not what we want notice if i increase its saturation value we get cyan well what happened i'll go ahead and click ok to click my way out here what happened is even though i'll press the i key to switch to the eyedropper you can also click on it over here in the toolbox but notice sample is set to all layers so if i click down here notice that I lift, I've got color, the, the color panel set to H, HSB values, hue, saturation, brightness. I can see I have a, a shade of orange, which is what I want. That's the region I clicked in just a moment ago. But we've got a bug, even though sample is set to all layers, the gradient map command isn't recognizing that. So it's sampling from the giraffe image, which isn't doing us any good. So what I had to do was just kind of click around, figure out some color values in advance. Now let's apply them. So I'll double click on gradient map right there in order to revisit so this is a dynamic adjustment thanks to the fact we're working with the smart object i'll click on the color ramp right there i'll make sure this guy is set actually I move this guy to a location value 40 percent right there is what i'm looking for then i'll double click on it and i decided to dial in these hsb values hue saturation and brightness so i'll set the hue value to 45 degrees is i believe what i am looking for let me check my notes that would be wrong my notes say i am 130 degrees which is orange and then i will set the saturation value to 100 percent which is a lot of saturation and full on and then i'll change the brightness value to 67 percent. so the hue is the only one that's measured in degrees on a full circle click ok and we have this beautiful orange right here i'm 
going to click to set another color stop right here at 60% location value, double click. And this time around, I'm pretty sure, double click more emphatically, I guess. This time I do want a hue value of 45 degrees and I'm looking for a brightness value of 100%. So this wonderful sunny yellow right here, click OK and just Oh, those drafts just pop, don't they? Now I want a very dark blue for black. So I'll double click on it. Here's something I want you to notice. I will set the hue value 250 degrees, which is kind of midway between blue and purple. And then I'll set the saturation value to 100% so that we're really maxing it out. And then I'll take the brightness value up to just five degrees. So very dark sort of bluish purple right here but very saturated as well you can't tell because it's so dark but that's okay i want you to notice though five uh, percent right there did i say degrees i meant percent if i take it i could take it as low as one percent notice this click ok and then if i double click on that color stop once again one percent it survives but if i take it down to i want you to see 250 100 for the hue and, and saturation values respectively. If I take that brightness value down to zero and click OK, I lose the other values. So I just zeroed out everything so I'm looking at black. So I'll have to re-enter those values. This will, by the way, even though it's a very, very dark color, it will inform the gradient, the transition of colors. Can you see that? By the way, I want you to see the difference between zero percent. So notice the giraffes, how the gradients of the luminous levels are going from black to orange right there. Whereas if I take this guy up to five, you can see a, a, some blue happening in those shadows. I'll click OK. I want to color up the shadows a little more. So I'm going to create another color stop at a location value of 25%. See that in the bottom right corner right there. And I'll change the hue value this time around to 80 degrees, which is going to be kind of a yellowish green. I'll leave the saturation value set to 100% and I'll take the brightness value up to 20% like so. And notice the rich greens transitioning from blue, from very dark blue to green, dark green still, to orange to yellow. And then, by the way, to white. We still have whites left over. Click OK a few times in order to escape out of all those dialog boxes. All right, finally, just one more thing that's kind of bugging me. I don't really like how dark the snouts are of both giraffes. So this guy's big lip, the baby's big lip here, big upper lip, is getting too dark. We don't have enough distinction between it and the background. And same with the snout of Ziggy, the mother dragon. Uh, <laughs> sorry, giraffe. Kind of dragon-like now that they're in fantasy land. And so what I'll do is, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. You could brighten it up, you know, using an independent layer. But I want the brightness to get colored by that gradient map uh, adjustment right there. So I want to create the brightness inside the original image. So I'm going to open up the smart object by double clicking on the thumbnail for that image right there. And then what I'm going to do is create a new layer just by pressing control shift N, command shift N on the Mac. And I'll call this layer white like so, because we're just going to make a white blob. Actually, I'll tap the D key and then I'll tap the X key so that the foreground color is white. So D for default, X to swap them. Then I will grab my brush tool, which you can get, of course, by pressing the B key. I'll right click and I'll make sure that the hardness value is 0% because I want a really soft brush stroke. It's not even going to be a brush stroke. It's just going to be a blob. And so I'm just going to change the size value to 1,000 pixels, so big. And now I'll just go ahead and press the enter key to accept that change. Now, you could click down here, which is really what I want to do. But if you do... You, you'll clip your brush stroke at the edge of the canvas. And you don't want to do that. Let me show you what I mean. I'll click right there, and then I'll press the V key to switch to my black my uh, move tool, that is. And I'll drag it off to the side, and you can see that bottom got clipped. So this is a little bit of a trick, by the way, a little bit of a tip. Undo that a couple of times. Press the B key to switch back to the brush tool. Click like this. Actually, well, that's still going to get clipped. I'm too close to the edge. Click just like in the center of things, like so. Then press the V key to switch to the black arrow, or the move tool once again. And uh, notice that I do have the full bro brush stroke going right there. And so I'll move it down here because that's where I want it. And I think right about there should do the trick. Now, I don't want it to just appear as this, this white shock, right? I'll go and save 
This, by the way, by going up to the file menu and choosing the save command, control S, command S on the Mac, because that will save my changes into the larger composition. And you can see that I now have this shock of white in their snouts. Now it is masked because I've got this impeccable layer mask, but it doesn't look good. What I want to do is bring back the shadow detail. So I'll switch to that image right that, or there, that temporary image. And I'll go over here to the layers panel and double click on an empty portion of that layer to bring up the layer style dialog box. And then I want to bring back the underlying shadows. So what I'm going to do is go, go down here to the underlying layer slider bar and I'll drag this black point over this black triangle right there. Notice that does reveal the darker shadows. And so the way I have things set, anything with the luminance level of 116 or darker is going to be revealed. We'll see through to those shadows. Anything 116 or lighter, all the way up to 255, which is white, is going to be opaque. And by the way, this thing starts off at zero. So you could see that, right? Anyway, I'll drag this over. What I want, however, is not to have the sharp transitions. I want to peel these guys apart by pressing the Alt key, the Option key on the Mac, and dragging the two triangle halves apart from each other. So that's an Alt or Option drag. I'm going to take this guy up to 155, and then I'll take this guy down to zero. So basically, we have a very soft transition going on. This is known as fuzziness, by the way. So anywhere from 155 anything brighter than 155 which is mm, pretty bright up to 255 is going to be opaque and anything in between is going to fade into opacity through translucency by the way and so we get this nice smooth transition click ok and let's check if we've done a good job i'll go up to the file menu and choose the save command once again that's not saving to disk that is saving into the larger composition and there it is so that looks real great to me. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the history panel. You can go to the window menu and choose history if you prefer. But notice I updated the smart object twice. So this is how it looked. These are, these are the dark snouts. And this is how it looked when I didn't blend the shadows back into place. And this is how things look now. So before, way before and after two different saves. And we end up with this final composition right here. And that, friends, is how I took a photograph, an actual real great photograph of a couple of giraffes at the Milwaukee Zoo, I think, and I blended them in with a fantastic AI background from Firefly here inside Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And to see me create that impeccable layer mask, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow, where the first 30 seconds or more are free. Then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deek Now.